having nearly died at the age of 30, we know that Julian lived to a ripe old age, at least into her 70s. We don't know exactly when she died, but we know that she was around in her 70s at least. And then if we go forward a hundred years or so, we come to the time of the Reformation. Religious orders were disbanded and monasteries dismantled. And that included the order of anchorites and anchoresses, and their prayer cells would have been turned to other uses or dismantled or just fallen into ruin. And so Julian's prayer cell at St. Julian's Church was no more and all that remained were a few fragments of flint. And there was a little bit of a similar story for Julian's book, The Revelations of Divine Love. That had to become something of an underground text following the Reformation. The Protestant Church didn't really approve of mystical writings such as Julian's, and they were really banished. Fortunately for us, a few of those early manuscripts, handwritten, of Julian's book did survive the centuries. And by the time we get to the beginning of the 20th century, it was decided that yes, Julian's book should be properly published again, perhaps in a slightly more modern rendering to make it accessible for contemporary readers. And through the 20th century, and now in the 21st century, Julian has become a publishing phenomenon. There are many alternative modern renderings of Julian's book to choose from and it is possible to get a printed copy of her original text which is rather lovely and beautiful. It preserves the flavour of her voice. It can be hard to read, a bit like Geoffrey Chaucer, but worth the effort. In the Second World War, there was a little bit of an unfortunate event which had a silver lining to the cloud. Norwich, like many towns and cities, was bombed. In 1942, several medieval churches in Norwich were destroyed by bombs, including the top half, at least, of St Julian's Church. But unlike most of the other churches that were damaged, St Julian's was rebuilt, the roof was put back on, the tower partially restored and at the same time somebody came up with the good idea, hey why don't we recreate Julian's prayer cell at the same time as she's taking off in popularity then people can come and visit and think about her spirituality and so to this day you can visit St Julian's Church in Norwich and her recreated prayer cell and it is a very potent place to sit and contemplate, full of atmosphere and alongside there is a very friendly Julian Centre for you to visit with Julian books and gifts and a library. Julian has become very popular in recent years. There is even an order of Julian of Norwich, a small religious community in the states of men and women. And in recent decades there's been a thing called the Julian meetings which have become popular, a way of sharing contemplative prayer in a small group in a Christian context. And I'll say a little bit about that in another piece to camera. Julian's spirituality, 600 years on, still seems relevant for us today. It helps us to engage, to engage with a God who is more loving than the church has dreamed of. Julian's writing, her spirituality, her theology we might say, comes not from textbooks, not from an academic head, but from the heart, from her own personal experience, her near-death experience, her visit to heaven and her discussions about the meaning of life with God himself and Jesus Christ. 
This is what makes her writing so potent. A little bit like St Paul, who wrote about half of the New Testament. But he wasn't writing just because he had a few clever ideas. He was writing because he'd had his own near-death experience on the road to Damascus in which he was taken, he later wrote, to the third heaven and encountered God and Jesus Christ. His writing remains potent 2,000 years later and Julian's writing remains potent 600 years later. She still has so much to teach us about true spirituality. And in Norfolk, we are proud to say she is one of our own.